Hey, what's up, everyone? You're currently tuned into TBD on the live stream or on KCSB FM 91.9 in Santa Barbara and netnetradio.com out of Tijuana. I'm joined by my new and old friends in Massline out of Oxnard. So how, how have you guys been holding up during quarantine? What have you been up to? How have you adapted? How do you like virtual gigs? The world has been pretty chaotic the past you know, few months, especially for those living in the U.S. So yeah, what have you guys been up to? Um, it's been pretty much life as usual, you know? Yeah, 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 I feel you. I just had to keep going. Yeah. And uh, I didn't have the luxury to be holed up making bread or anything like that, you know? I feel that, dude. <laughs> oh, I was just going to say definitely the same here. Like, I have not had any, like, time off, like, this whole COVID, like, thing. I've, like, had to work every day I was supposed to. Like, yeah, yeah, never yeah. even closed. We actually got busier at my job, so... Oh really? What it is? Uh, yeah. <laughs> what What do you do for work? Um, just right now I just work at a like a coffee shop sort of. Yeah. So yeah, because of people staying in, like we got all the delivery apps. Like we have so many like yeah. tablets in the back. They're constantly <laughs> ringing. Like. That's insane. <laughs> so I guess we'll we'll jump into like your band. So so what can you guys tell me about Massline? What What's working class or proletariat hardcore? What can you tell me about that? Uh, well, we wanted to create music that inspired people to fight back, you know? Yeah. You know, there's a lot of out, art out there that's kind of like, oh, the messaging is in yourself or however <laughs> you want to look at it. That creates the message. Yeah. We wanted to be clear about what we're trying to create. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's built from the people of Oxnard. Oxnard is a very working class city. Mm -hmm. And so we're just inspired by this, you know, you know, the struggles of people of Oxnard all around us and in our own histories what we've had to deal with so you know and punk is very straightforward too you know yeah punk, you know punk is like kill the rich fight back that's nothing yeah, exactly yeah so we're just continuing a tradition that, that that's that's the origin of punk right rebellion yeah 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 exactly so so i guess does that tie into like the name mass line like what does mass line mean yeah it, it's just like this uh like theory or so about just making like your message like whatever it is for like the working people as accessible um as you possibly can and uh yeah that's generally like how i describe it like it's not about like being in like a clique or like being like exclusive it's like not nah, like if you're gonna say that you're like here for the people like uh -huh. you gotta be here for the people you know like it uh -huh. doesn't you know like it, nobody needs to like be excluded like you don't need to like use like crazy like lingo or anything and like make people feel like isolated like it's all about like being welcoming and like just like trying to like give people a place to belong and like fight back you know uh -huh. yeah also on that like going on with like it's like a theory and ideology that like if people are experiencing a problem like we're not gonna be able to that problem won't be solved by like endless gofundmes like we need you need to basically go to the people who are experiencing this issue and just like be able to relay like get that information and be able to use that information to create a plan and like fight back against whatever's going on rather than just like sitting idly by and like posting on instagram about the issue mm -hmm. yeah that's cool so uh oh and it's cool because some of our songs are about it too they break down the steps um listen to the masses you know synthesize their ideas mm -hmm. and then return the ideas to the people yeah and step one is listening so we're not forgetting that part, you know? Yeah, that's dope. So uh, I love that you guys are actually, you know, talking about a message like, you know, trying to get people, you know, out there. You know what I'm saying? That's cool. So uh, you guys are brand new um, and this is like your first gig and everything. Uh, how did you guys come together to start a band? Um, well, we just realized <laughs> that we all played instruments. Yeah. So, I mean, not me. I guess I'm the only one, but <laughs> yells. But I mean, there's a lot of people who have mad talents out there and we just realized hey we we got the know-how might as well use it how was it starting a band i guess like uh during covid were there any like roadblocks or anything or was it kind of just like pretty smooth sailing um i think it was like kind of interesting just because uh like you know every so often there would be like a covid scare so it'd just be like everything would be on pause and like yeah we'll have to wait it out until like everyone's clear so we could like get back to practice and stuff and like yeah so i think that made um starting a new band a little interesting yeah i remember when uh max hit me up 
uh, originally to like be on the show or whatever. You know, we can't be on the show. We're going to have to wait like a couple months or something because we just had a COVID scare or whatever. You know, like way, way back. I think that was in like January or something like that. So, uh, yeah, that's interesting. So uh, I understand you guys were in like a few other bands. Like, what were they again? You guys want to want to tell me about those? All right. So I used to play in a. I, I guess my first band was called Swellbo, Swell and after Bo. that, uh, I was playing in Strike Fast for Strike a couple Fast. years. <laughs> Never forget. And then uh, I was doing a uh, sustains for a while too. Oh hell yeah, that's sick. Yeah, all S bands and now Mass Line and In Time. Hey hell yeah, that's cool. Sustains is sick. So is In Time. Then it's Strike Fast. <laughs> Any, anybody else wanna? I, I think there was like Sing Quince or something. Yeah, Sing Quince represent. Hell yeah! What well, what was up with uh, that band? Um, well, I mean, <laughs> you know, uh, another Oxnard, you know, political band. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I mean that was that was actually rare, just because we were like all women in the band. Mm-hmm. Um, so. I'm really grateful like like me and Sage are together in the band and that we have like a gender balanced band you know it's cool uh-huh. shows like men and women can unite yeah that's cool um so I guess did like any of these bands like influence your current work or anything your current band yeah of course I mean you always learn from you know yeah things that went well or things that didn't go well uh-huh. so I'm just excited because you know what matters most is people um you know dedication mm-hmm. to the band and if they even really want to be there you know yeah, they exactly. go the really long way yeah so i'm excited to just be with people who are stoked to make music together mm-hmm. and that's that's always really inspiring yeah that's cool so uh, um sorry go ahead. i think for me like something that makes this band like super distinct is like you know like there's a there's like like a really like strong message behind it rather than it just like being something that's kind of like materialistic and mm-hmm. like um i don't know stuff like that so i think that's what really makes his band stand out in my opinion yeah that's cool than... that that was actually kind of what i was going to ask next is like what what uh sticks out most like what do you guys do different with this band as opposed to like the other bands you guys were in before you know um so that's really cool uh did anybody want to like add anything else to that or so uh, uh, Sage was in a band too, but she doesn't have to say what it was. But she also was in a band. So. Yeah, you don't have to say it if you don't want to. <laughs> you don't have to say which one though. Yeah, I've um, I you know honestly like, what makes what something I've learned from like the past now is like I actually haven't been in a band for a while. Um, let's see, like I think the last time I played in a band I was like seventeen or eighteen. Uh, I'm like twenty two now, so I'm not gonna do the math, but yeah, it's, it's been a few <laughs> years, you know. Yeah, like, it's been a while. Uh, yeah, and like it was fun, you know, like when I was younger. Um, yeah, I was in like one band like briefly, mm-hmm. and then after that, I started. I was like, you know, what? I want to like do something like on my own. Mm-hmm. So like me and just like you know the way it always happens with like punk bands and stuff, and like high school like you just play with your friends and like if you're not the best it doesn't matter because you're yeah. always learning you're having fun yeah and, like, DIY. yeah and i think that was like pretty good for me um like just focusing on like yeah you know like we're gonna make some mistakes but you know as long as we like want to learn and like we all want to be here that's what matters and mm-hmm. i think that was a good lesson to learn um and i've like played music in like other spaces too and you know like everyone has their own goal like you know some people make bands because they have like an idea that they want to get across or they're just trying to go for a specific sound and just like really perfect that so like you just gotta like find your own like space which like i think we all have Um, yeah yeah a big thing too is like like when natalie said like it's really hard like being like a woman a woman or like them presenting or like just you know like it's just difficult like being in any scene uh-huh. let alone like the punk scene and uh-huh. that's something that i've like noticed a lot um and that you know so like it's great to like actually like be able to like make music with people who like stand by like their politics because like you know you think that in the punk scene like just because someone says like oh yeah like i'm for like equal rights like women you don't suck but you know they say one thing but they act like another way so yeah i really like <laughs> yeah i really appreciate people that don't just say something but they like actually like genuinely mean it and like 
are taking steps to do it like not just to like say it online and that's why i really appreciate um being in this band uh-huh. um I really appreciate everyone I like play with. So. Yeah, that's cool. You you guys are actually about it, you know. Actually, actually down to earth, not like the the rest of the the, the scene, I guess. I don't, I don't know what the rest of the scene's like, but <laughs> I'm assuming. So, uh, hell yeah. <laughs> so I mean, I'm gonna defend the scene just because I don't want to talk. But you know what I mean? Like, I think punks they want to take action, you know, and that's how I became politicized. Yeah. Punk, you know? mm-hmm anti-capitalist you know lyrics and mm-hmm. saying for the police and yeah you know not just and, and fight the police you know things like that like um so we definitely want to be a band that's of the people that's of the scene that that you know we're not above them or we're not separate from them but yeah um, yeah i think that yeah. i think that's really cool yeah i, I definitely like that's why like the punk scene in particular has always been like so great you know because like yeah you know here and there there's like a few people that you know that just like not you know the like best to like be around but like generally like people are all like attracted to the scene for like their own reasons uh-huh. and like those tend to be pretty good ones and they unite with like or they agree with like a lot of what like all these like punk fans and like people have to say and like they all <laughs> you know kind of like yeah. say the same thing as agreeing that a lot of the issues that we deal with on like a daily basis is like you know just like working class people Mm -hmm. and whatnot like they're really like bad and like you know it's hard and like it sucks and i think that you know people you know can relate to that yeah i think that's cool i feel like your music is like super relatable for the average person i feel like that's what's cool about punk as well it's like it's just you know they're talking about like you know you guys are all about like you know being you know by the people for the people and i think that's really sick because just like anybody can like show up to a show and be like oh dude i actually like really resonate with like the message you guys are talking about you know so anyways so i guess like being oxnard based i've had a few people uh on the show say they don't fit into i guess like what the 805 scene is um but i feel like the 805 has a pretty sprawling punk scene like we kind of like briefly talked about this um do you guys feel like you fit in well with the punk scene what it currently is now well we've never played a real show yet so yeah. <laughs> you know when we when we bust in some backyards and we'll be able to tell you hell yeah but i mean <laughs> i mean we have my friends who are punks you know yeah That's, we're connected it's not like we're mm-hmm. dropping in out of nowhere out of outer space or something you know yeah um and i really i can't wait to start playing shows with everybody and obviously that's you know what's been missing for the past year is just that ability to connect yeah 100 um, percent. and uh you know punk rock is not code friendly it's a contact sport you know it's yeah very, <laughs> you know you can't really uh sanitize it yeah so i hope everyone has the chance to get vaccinated and get out there so we can be pushing each other in the circle again yeah exactly <laughs> dude i'm really excited to uh get more involved in like the the 805 scene i've mostly been you know, up in Santa Barbara doing that stuff, but I'm excited to check out more of like the local scene, see what it's about, you know? So I'm really excited, especially to see you guys after, uh, you know, seeing your set it makes me pumped to, uh, you know, see some more shows like that. So Oxnard was really popping off actually right before COVID, you know, shout out to like civil conflict, you know, they're, yeah, civil conflict they're one is of sick. the more young bands that were just so consistent in playing like multiple shows every weekend all over the yeah. place, you know, they're really grindy. And um, so, you know, they were really making it happen with this resurgence of the punk scene in Oxnard. Yeah, totally. So. Um, I think it was Nick Bryden who booked, uh, what's it called, Civil Conflict and like a few other people in time played at uh, in Santa Barbara. And I was surprised at all the people that they brought through, you know, all of like the 805 people they brought through. Um, I was mm-hmm. like, dude, I mean, Santa Barbara's 805, but like specifically Ventura people who like I just never saw from the Santa Barbara scene. I was like, wow, this is crazy. You guys have like groupies you know um so that's pretty cool but anyways so um so you guys currently don't have any like music out right now can we expect anything soon is there anything in the oven yeah we should be recording a demo soon and then after that just writing more like we have more songs that we have a demo like planned out just need to record it and then we have like more songs we're going to record and put out as well so hell yeah demo probably a demo by summer tight um you guys gonna do tapes or anything? Definitely. Hell yeah. Probably do a tape in a zine. T- 
Tape and Azine? Sick, dude. That's cool. <laughs> Through FTK? Probably. Shout out, shout out to JP. Shout out JP, dude. Sickest, sickest 805 label. J JP willing, will it'll be out on FTK. Hell yeah. <laughs> so um, I, I guess that's like, uh, you know, the end of all the questions that I have, but we have one fan question from mm. from Gina. Do you get you guys know Gina, right? Linda Susan on Instagram. That's her music. Yeah. Yeah, hell yeah. So she was like, What's it like knowing you have nothing but big ol' riffs? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Linda. Dang. <laughs> I, I mean shout shout out Gina. She was in this band for a minute and wrote wrote some big old riffs, so Oh hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, like every band Gina does is fantastic. So shout shout out shout out Gina. Yeah, Gina's so um, good. But other than that, that's all that's all Dario on stage. I have nothing to do with that. I just bang pots and pans. <laughs> yeah, the reason we have such banging riffs is because she wrote them. Oh, that's crazy. I didn't know that no, Gina was. Not in. all of them, not all of them. <laughs> Couple tracks. That's cool. I didn't know Gina played with you guys. Yeah. Um do do you guys have anything else you want to say about that? About about the big old riffs? The big old riffs? I mean, if the kids like them, that's what matters, right? Hell yeah. yeah. I mean, that's that's the goal to see a big pit as soon as you start, you know. Yeah. So, hopefully, you you can jump in there. Um, you know? Yeah, we, dude. We need a lot of participation. Yeah. So. <laughs> Looking forward that's to the it. The best thing is too is like when people, uh, you know, they're not afraid to be hands on. So. Yeah. In a good way. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> um, Sage, Sage, I know you play the gu play guitar in the band, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what what can you say about that? Um, about playing guitar in the band? I know. I guess uh, just the question that Gina asked. You know, like, how, what's it like knowing you Hell have yeah. nothing but big old riffs? Hell yeah, they bang. They're hard. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, I think Sage and I we have like this really good like chemistry where she like come up with like a with a really good riff and like we just compliment each other and like I don't know. I think. We work well, like co collaboratively. Yeah, and that's another thing that I really like about this band is that like we all like um, are able to like kind of like say like no nah, that doesn't work and then kind of like struggle yeah. until like something does work. You know? Yeah, you guys you guys work together, figure it out. It's tight. So fight music, riffs. Fight music. <laughs> <laughs> music to fix riffs, riffs to fight to. Hell yeah. <laughs> So uh, I guess that's I, that's all we have, I guess, for the show. But I have one more question that I ask everybody at the end. Um, it's kind of a big one. Are you guys ready for it? Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna I mean, how big could it be? It's huge. It's um, huge. So. Yes. Okay. All right. Here we go. So a rat is going to jump into your mouth. Do you want this rat to jump into your mouth head first or butt first and why? Well, I'm vegan. That ain't jumping in nowhere. <laughs> you can give a vegan Edward? answer. You don't have to hurt it. I think I think tail first because I'm trying to grow a rat tail. <laughs> oh hell yeah! <laughs> I feel like that'll give me rat tail energy. So tail first. That's right. sick. It is dude. true. He is trying to grow a rat tail. That's so all sick. Of our, all of our concerns. So that's my answer. I love that, dude. Uh, Max is gonna take one for the team and, and grow a rat tail. Hell yeah! I don't. I don't think I've seen a rat jump backwards before, so I don't know if it's even scientifically possible. I don't think I've ever seen that. How would it? Yeah, end so up jumping backwards into your mouth. I always have to like lay this out for everyone because they're like, "How does a rat jump backwards?" You know, I've only seen one jump forwards, but I guess you have. You guys have all seen that movie Ratatouille, right? Of course. Yeah. Classic. Classic. yeah, dude, classic, classic. So I mean, if it's that rat, that's a whole different scenario. Yeah, it's like that one. <laughs> I mean, that rat uh, apparently lives around food, and there's no help. Concern, so, so he has to be clean, right? He has to be clean. If he's working in a kitchen, I would assume he's clean. I don't know. Well, anyway, so I guess the scene where, uh, you know, he's, like, up in the rafters. Like, this is the beginning of the movie, I think. Yeah, he, like, they fall off, you know, and that's how the humans discover them. I'm thinking yeah. something like that. Like he falls down from the rafters or something. But I'm pretty sure I have consumed rat after, you know, living in big cities. I'm pretty sure. Um, and living in Oxnard, inhaling pesticides every day, I'm pretty sure I'm immune to anything that can kill me. So. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> you know what? I welcome all rat parts in my mouth. Hell yeah. Fighting music. Fighting music. 
<laughs> so, uh, Sa- Sage, do you have a a stance? Head first. Head. Yeah, head first. Because I don't. I think rats are cute. I don't have a problem with them. And yeah. if it's like it's face first, and it's like it's like I'm not really eating, and I'm just kind of like nom. Like uh-huh. I don't know, just like Aww. lightly. I could just put my like mouth around it, and, like or like I could open my mouth and like it can like run away or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It seems less threatening if it's like the back end first. It's like how did it get like that? And, like, yeah, you I know. I don't know. I feel like that might be more uncomfortable, but I don't. Like, like you, had, you had to try to do this. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's and I, you know <laughs> I'm sure it's less enjoyable for the rat too. So or you know I wouldn't know. I'm not a rat. But <laughs> I would think she's actually <laughs> concerned about the well being of the rat. That's. Yeah, I mean, that's a big concern, dude. I would be too. I wouldn't want to hurt it, you know? I am not concerned about the rat. (laughs) Yeah, screw that rat, right? (laughs) So uh, I I guess that's about all we have for the show, guys. Um, Thanks for tuning into TBD on KCSB FM 91.9 every Sunday, 4 to 6 p.m. And NetNet Radio out of Tijuana every Saturday, 8 p.m. This is Massline out of Oxnard. Thanks for being on the show, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas.